On the previous project, we ran through uh, an initial FPGA build, took you through the VHDL and the Verilog code, and showed you how to build the FPGA and program it. That is going to be very important from all the projects here on out, because that flow is going to be exactly the same. Um, so the previous project was relatively simple, but the flow was what was important. So I do want you to remember that. If you didn't see that video, definitely go back and watch it and make sure that you get the whole build process down pat. This video I'm very excited for because this video is going to introduce to you lookup tables. Lookup tables are the first fundamental FPGA opponent that I'm going to talk about. And they come into play for logic that is called combinational logic. That's the word for it. And I'm going to explain to you how lookup tables work and what they're used for. So let's take uh, an example here. Uh, here we have an AND gate represented by this schematic diagram here. An AND gate, a normal AND gate, has two inputs and one output. And here is the truth table for that AND gate. The output, Q, is only equal to a 1 when both of the two inputs are equal to a 1. So 0, 0, the output is 0, 0, 1, the output is 0, 1, 0, the output is 0, 1, 1, aha, here is the solution where the output is equal to a 1. And logically it makes sense because the output is equal to 1 when input A and input B are equal to a 1, hence the name AND gate. A truth table shows all the combinations of inputs and outputs for this particular gate. There's also something like an OR gate, which is represented by this schematic symbol here. An OR gate will be 1 when either inputs, either input A or input B are equal to a 1. So you can see the truth table for an OR gate here. The only situation where the output is zero or low is when both inputs are zero or low. These two gates are fundamental examples of what we call Boolean logic. Boolean logic is a branch of mathematics um, that basically just refers to the fact that everything can represented, be represented by zero and one, false and true. So that's what Boolean, and when we talk about Boolean logic or Boolean algebra, that's what we're getting at. So now my question to you is this. Are there really thousands of AND gates sitting on your FPGA waiting to be utilized and thousands of OR gates so that if you just happen to write a piece of code that says, you know, output Q gets input A or input B, it says, aha, I'm going to go instantiate an OR gate. That doesn't seem very efficient. If you have a design that's heavily in AND gates or NOT gates or NAND gates, how can you balance that? And, the, and the, really the answer is that you can't. There aren't dedicated pieces of logic. Uh, these, there aren't dedicated gates on your FPGA. There's no OR gate on your FPGA that you can point at. Instead, the FPGA uses what is called a lookup table or a LUT. L-U-T. A lookup table can have a certain number of inputs and, and one output. So, for example, there can be a two-input LUT. And a two-input LUT can, can be implemented to create what is effectively an AND gate, or it can be implemented to create what is effectively a two-input OR gate. The interesting thing about a two-input LUT is that no matter what combination of inputs you give it, it can produce any combination of outputs. So it can, it can be an OR gate, it can be an AND gate, it can be a NAND gate, it can be a NOT gate with one of the inputs that's just unused. It, it's very flexible. It can produce a two-input, a two-input LUT can produce any Boolean logic equation you can think of given two inputs and one output. That is important. There, are, in 1985, a two-input LUT was cutting-edge technology stuff. Being able to have one component on your FPGA that could be reprogrammed to be an AND gate this time and an OR gate the next time—pretty cool, cutting-edge stuff. You know, we take it for granted nowadays that that's possible, 
But when FPGAs were first invented in the mid 80s, that was pretty, pretty sweet. So two input LUTs were around for a little while, and then we went to th things get more complicated and we add more, more flexibility. You go to three input LUTs or four input LUTs, and some newer FPGAs have even more inputs than that. On the NANDLAND GO board, the FPGA uses four input lookup tables, four input LUTs. So given any four inputs, you can produce a Boolean algebra equation that has any uh, that has one output. On the previous project, we tied every single LED to one individual switch. So when switch one was pushed, D1 illuminated. When switch two was pushed, D2 illuminated. On this project, I want to design some VHDL and Verilog code that is going to use one of one single lookup table on the device. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell the VHDL and the Verilog code only illuminate LED D1 when both switch 1 and switch 2 are are pushed down at the same time. So what that means is that when when both switch 1 is a 1 and switch 2 is a 1, then D1 can go ahead and light itself up. That effectively is building an AND gate. So we're turning our one lookup table into an AND gate. Okay, It's going to be relatively simple VHDL and Verilog code, but I do want to show you the fact that when you, when you write some VHDL and Verilog code, you're actually instantiating a lookup table on this particular design. So it's pretty cool stuff. We're seeing how some components actually get created during the build process. I'll start with the Verilog code and I'll, it's, it'll be pretty short, so I'll just uh, do that quickly and then we'll go to VHDL. For the Verilog code, the very first thing we need to do is to find the interface uh, for the module. So module and gate, the interface is two inputs, I switch one and I switch two and a single output, OLED1. That's the interface for the module. Now again, these signals are important to match exactly what I wrote here because these get mapped to physical pins on the FPGA via the constraints file. So uh, definitely make sure that you type them the same way I did. And now we can use an assign statement to assign the output LED1 to I switch one single ampersand I switch two and module. The single ampersand here is the very first operator that we've introduced and is called a bitwise operator and it operates on switch one which is a single bit wide and switch two which is a single bit wide and the out the and the bitwise and of those two signals gets set to OLED1. So when switch 1 is equal to 1 and switch 2 is equal to 1, the LED will illuminate. That is the completion of the Verilog code. For the VHDL code, again, you need those first two lines that we introduced in the previous project. Library IEEE, use IEEE dot standard logic 1164.all. Someday I'll tell you what those mean, but today's not that day. Entity and gate. So, uh, entity and gate is. So and gate is the name that we're, that we're giving it. We just called it that. Uh, and we, need to, we do need to find the port for this particular entity. So uh, let's do that. I switch one is the very first signal. The direction is in. And the type is standard logic. You can think of standard logic for now as just being zeros or ones. There are more options for standard logic, but for now, let's just pretend that zero and one is the only thing that that can be. And we have one output, OLED1. And that's it. So uh, do keep in mind the semicolons terminate every line except for the last one. So that's our port. All right. Now we that's that makes up the entity which again is the interface for this particular design. Now we need to define the architecture. Entity and architecture are a pair. 
Arche oh boy. Architecture. That's how you spell it. Uh, RTL is usually what I call my architectures, but you can call them whatever you want. And Emacs is nice enough to generate some code for me. So, if you don't have Emacs, you're going to have to type all that stuff yourself. But uh, the, the architecture itself is literally going to be one line, and it's going to be this. It's going to be an assignment of OLED1 with the less than equal sign, which again is the assignment operator. And the way I say things like this is, I'll write it first, OLED1 gets, for the less than equal sign, I usually say the word gets, OLED1 gets I switch 1 and I switch 2. The lowercase and can be uppercase 2, VHDL is not case sensitive, is a logical operator. Now this is the first logical operator that we've introduced so far. There are others. But this is effectively designing an AND gate. This is going to be creating a single lookup table and making that lookup table behave like an AND gate. So that's it. Save your file as AND gate.vhd and uh, VHD is your, your VHDL file. And we're gonna go ahead and build, go through the build process for both VHDL and Verilog next. All right, for building the design now, you can do one of two things. You can either open the project that you created previously from the previous video, or you can go ahead and create a new project for every single design you, you do. Um, I just did the easy thing, which is opening the project that we created last time. So my design file shows the previous switches to LEDs.v that we did from the previous video. I'll just go ahead and remove that and add in the one we just created. So, and gate.v. That's the one we just made. And we're going to go ahead and run synthesis. Again, synthesis is when it takes the code and builds the physical components on the FPGA. And aha, look at this usage report here. Whew. Usage report, that's the device. Oh, SB LUT4, one use. Look at that. We have used one lookup table, 0%. It does round down. So you, you, you used one of them. There's 1,200 or something like that. So. Yeah, it just says that you use 0%, but it, you, it, that's more than zero. I don't know, it lies. But yeah, one, woohoo! So you have an AND gate there. So that means that everything I said was not a lie. And uh, you, congratulations, you have designed your very first lookup table. Very, very exciting. Let's go ahead and run the rest of the flow so that we can get the FPGA uh, bitmap. And uh, we're going to program that bitmap to the Go board. Uh, I, I showed that in the previous video, so I'm going to skip that step and just show you the results. Okay, the Go board has been programmed, and the code that we wrote is now running on the board. Now you'll notice when I push S, uh, switch 1, nothing happens. When I push switch 2, nothing happens. But when I push both of them together, the LED lights up. So the lookup table is performing correctly. It is performing like an AND gate. So congratulations, you now have an introduction to what a lookup table is. The next video is going to introduce the next fundamental component inside of an FPGA, the D flip-flop. The D flip-flop and the lookup table are by far the two most fundamental components on your FPGA.